Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Which mid-range graphics card should you buy in 2018? We're looking at two different cards today. The $300 GTX 1060 6GB card and the $500 GTX 1070 Ti 8GB card. I've got a bunch of performance comparisons at both 1080p and 1440p for you. Dollar cost per frame per second, percentage difference charts, and more all coming up very soon. The reason I selected these two cards is that these relative price points they are the deal on the market at the moment. For about the 300-ish dollar price range, 250 to 350, the 6 gig 1060 is the one to buy. And for the 450 to 550 range, the 1070 Ti is the one to buy. I will talk about the others, but these really are the deals at the moment. Now, link down in the video description below will be links to Amazon and Newegg for both of these cards for all of them. Generally, the performance is very similar between each of the manufacturers, whether it has one fan or two fan on the six gig cards, doesn't make a huge difference. Whether it has two or three fans on the 1070 Ti doesn't make a huge difference as well, a little bit, but generally paying a lot more doesn't get you a lot more. So pick the brand you like and then buy the least expensive card that you frankly like the way it looks. Are you looking for an incredible value for the money? Please check the link to Fanatical down in the description below. I have been a Fanatical customer, which used to be called Bundle Stars, for a long, long time. Bought a lot of Steam keys from them. They have some amazing sales, not just on old games, but also on brand new games. Huge bundles with great value for the money. Some of the bundles are just a couple dollars a piece and include half a dozen Steam keys. Link in the description below. These are all directly sourced straight from the manufacturer, not a key reselling site. It's all legitimate from the manufacturer. Go check it out, support tech deals, and get a great value for your money. Our test bench for today is the excellent Ryzen 5 2600X, six cores, 12 threads, on all the cores, it generally runs at about 4 gigahertz, sometimes boosting to 4.1 on all six cores. I am using the included stock cooler and it is installed on a mid-range motherboard. I do have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200, which works just fine. And I do recommend that if you are currently buying RAM. If you have a little bit slower, it's fine. But 3200 is currently the sweet spot for price to performance. Now, the clock speed of these cards was manually set to as close to 2 gigahertz as I could get it, especially the 1070 Ti's, which do not come in a factory overclocked version. MSI Afterburner, open it up, type a plus 100 to plus 200 on the GPU and a plus 100 to plus 200 on the VRAM. Click the little uh, check mark to make it okay, minimize it, and you are good to go. Now, this particular For the Win card didn't need much of an overclock. It was a plus 50 and it was right there, but some of the lesser 1060 cards will, so give them a plus 50 to a plus 200 depending upon which card you buy. In my experience, all of these cards will generally run at or near two gigahertz if you just give them a little bit of a boost in MSI Afterburner. Before we jump into the benchmark charts themselves, I would like to talk about the specs and features of these cards before we do that. First of all, the GTX 1060 cards cannot be SLI'd. The 1070 Ti's can. I don't recommend it, but they can. The 1070 Ti has nearly double the CUDA core count of the 1060, so it should be nearly twice as fast, except it isn't except in limited circumstances where you're solely stressing the GPU and they're both fully loaded. All but one of the benchmarks I'm about to show you were done at high detail, not ultra. If you crank all the details up to the max, you crank the resolution up and you make it punishing, there is a larger performance difference than what you're about to see. But the truth of the matter is, I think high detail is actually where most games are meant to be played. Ultra is for screenshots, high is for enjoying the game, and medium and low are simply for people on older machines or limited budgets who simply want to try to run the game. So at high detail, there is not as much of a performance difference as you may see in some other performance comparisons because a lot of other people love to test these at ultra, but ultra often enacts a 20 to 30% performance penalty for very minor visual quality differences. I play it high, I recommend you play it high, unless you have all the money in the world to buy a 1080 Ti to play at Ultra, looking at you Ghost Run Recon Wildlands, set it to high and get much better performance for your money. And with all that being said, let's take a look at some benchmarks. The first game we're gonna look at today is Assassin's Creed Origins, high detail, both 1080p and 1440p on the same chart, average and minimum for the built-in benchmark. Now, in terms of average performance, both of these cards at 1080p will play over 60 frames per second, but the 1070 Ti has quite a bit more headroom. 
89 frames per second average versus 67. Because these are averages and the performance will dip below that at times, you just have more headroom with the 1070 Ti. You don't need a 1070 Ti for 1080p gaming, but it's nice to have and will last longer. The minimums, being minimums and a benchmark are down pretty much at the same level, but that's to be expected for such a short run and for a minimum. The 1440p average is interesting. We are below 60 frames per second with the 1060 six gig card, 49 frames per second. That's actually still playable, but it's not as smooth as maybe some people would like. 68 frames per second at 1440p with the 1070 Ti shows where this card really shines. Now it's true you're paying extra money for that, but if you wanna play at 1440p, if you want 60 plus frames per second, that's where it's at. Look at the 1440p minimum. Now, again, minimums, there was one frame in there that kicked it down to 16 on the 1060. It's gonna be better than that in most cases, but if you wanna play at 1440p and you have the money, get a 1070 Ti. Now this is the percentage chart and it's skewed a bit because of the 1440p minimum. I thought about leaving it off, but it is what it is. 33% performance difference at 1080p average, 39% performance difference at 1440p average. Now as I'm gonna show you in a minute with the dollar cost per frame per second chart, yes, the 1066 gig is still a better deal, but the question is how long is it gonna last that way for the next Assassin's Creed or anything else coming out? At 1080p, you're paying $4.48 per frame per second on the 1066 gig card, at least at $300, and $5.62 per frame per second on the $500 GTX 1070 Ti. Now, again, it depends upon what price you can find these cards for. If either card is more or less, it will throw those off. You are paying a bit of a premium for the 1070 Ti, but I will remind you, it's going to last longer. It basically, it'll be longer before you have to replace it, but you're paying for that. Now at 1440p, the, th the same story repeats. $6.12 on the 1066 gig card versus $7.35 per frame per second on the 1070 Ti. The lower end cards are generally a better value for the money. It just depends on what premium experience you want. Jumping into Dawn of War 3, we have much more consistent performance with the built-in benchmark here. Some games are better than others. 89 frames per second average on the 1066 gig at 1080p versus 116 frames per second average on the 1070 Ti. Do you need a 1070 Ti to play games like Dawn of War 3 at 1080p high detail? Lord no, this plays just fine on lower end cards. Where it gets interesting is at 1440p. 63 versus 91. On both a percentage basis and an absolute basis, that's a fairly hefty jump. Now you might say, but I only care about 60 frames per second and so 63 is fine. That's fine, but that's an average. The minimum isn't much lower at 53, but again, built-in benchmark, real battles, really big and intense may drop below that. What you're getting with the 1070 Ti is more consistent performance, 91 and 76. If you want smooth delivery, if you want an overall superior gaming experience, pay more, get more. And then when Dawn of War 4 comes out, then hopefully it'll still be playable. At 1440p average, we have a 44.4% performance difference and 36% performance difference with the minimum. Much larger jumps than at 1080p. Again, you don't really need this for 1080p. It's nice to have, but it's at 1440p that it really shines. Unless you simply want to have three plus years of gaming experience at 1080p, in which case, yeah, you'll want the 1070 Ti. That huge performance difference does not translate into a better value, however. We have a $4.76 per frame per second on the 1066 gig card versus a $5.49 frame per cost per frame per second on the 1070 Ti. Now, yes, it's faster, and yes, it's substantially faster, but because it is so much more expensive, 500 versus 300, the better value remains the 1066 gig. I've, I've tweeted about this. I've mentioned this during my Twitch live streams. The real deal on the market today is that six gig 1060 at $300, just because the three gig cards are 250, and I don't think it's worth saving $50 at this point for half VRAM and 10% less performance. But if you wanna step up to the plate, the 1070 Ti would be my next choice. Far Cry 5, the new open world game from Ubisoft, 
1080p is just fine on a 1060. 73 frames per second average, 62 frames per second minimum, it's just fine. Sure, if you have a high refresh rate monitor, if you want a smoother experience, absolutely a 1070 Ti will do it. If you step up to 1440p, I would really recommend the 1070 Ti if you can afford it. You can always turn down to medium detail if you want. Please note, we're not at ultra. We don't have it cranked to the max. We've already compromised on detail to get these performance numbers. 50 frames per second, 1440p average versus 76, that's a noticeable difference. That's the kind of difference that side by side in a blind test, if I put two identical computers together, didn't tell you which was which and you sat down and started playing them, I believe the majority of gamers could pick out 50 to 76. Is that worth a $200 price increase? That's a personal choice. I really like this chart because it illustrates in a percentage term rather than just in an FPS term how big that difference really is. Less at 1080p, but we've got a 52 and 62% performance difference at 1440p. The 1070 Ti today is an awesome 1440p card. With that huge performance difference, it almost closes the price gap at 1440p, $6 per frame per second on the 1060 versus $6.58 per frame per second on the 1070 Ti. Yes, it costs more, but they're really, really close. And I would like to point out more VRAM. It's going to last you longer. You can wait another generation to upgrade, whereas especially at 1440p, the 1060 will need it sooner. At 1080p, it's very much a luxury item. At 1440p, if you've got the 500, get the 1070 Ti. And now for a completely opposite experience. This just goes to show what happens when a game no longer requires any further performance. Forza Motorsport 7, high detail, and yes, all the settings are manually set to high. I know you have to go into custom and turn off all the dynamics. Don't worry, that was dumb. MSAA is turned off because it's a performance killer, but everything else was set to high or on. At 1080p, we are game engine or CPU limited. There's virtually no difference between these cards that makes any difference. And even at 1440p, it's not a big difference. 101 frames per second versus 125. Yes, the graphics card makes a bit of a difference, but is that worth a $200 price increase? Eh. If this is the kind of game you play, if you play sports games, driving games, etc., you may better benefit from a faster CPU more than a faster graphics card. Most games want a faster graphics card, but not all. And this shows what happens when you just don't need more graphics card. This is the interesting thing about percent charts. 24% faster at 1440p. Sounds impressive, doesn't it? Yes, but when they're both over 100 frames per second, does it really matter? No, I personally don't think so. Sure, Forza Motorsport 8 might run better on the 1070 Ti, but again, it comes down to the games you play and how much performance you want. No surprise here, for this game, there's no value to be had in a 1070 Ti. It's the 1060 all day long. And now for a bonus chart. This is World of Tanks Encore. It is the standalone benchmark that Wargaming released for the new 1.0 World of Tanks graphical and engine update. This is simply the built-in benchmark that provides a synthetic score. Free to download, download it and run it on your own computer. At 1080p, we're looking at 17,000 and change to 27,000 and change. It does make a difference, but I would like to point out in the real world, both of these cards will run way over 60 frames per second, even at ultra detail. At 1440p, you notice that we have 11,000 and change versus 18,000 and change. However, it's still 60 frames per second on the 1060 card, just barely. Want better performance? Turn it down to high detail instead of ultra if you have a 1060. Frankly, for World of Tanks, World of War Warships, Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege, the 1070 Ti is nice, but it's really overkill. The 1060 is a great card for those games at 1440p and completely perfectly fine at 1080p. Well, there you have it. A bunch of results at two different resolutions. The value today at 1080p is by far the GTX 1060 6 gig card. You can go with the 1070 Ti, you'll future-proof yourself a bit, or if you want faster frame rates, if you want 100 plus frames per second more than 60, it certainly will do that for you, but you are paying a bunch more money to get it. Now at 1440p, it becomes more complicated. The 1070 Ti is, in general, for new release AAA games, a better choice, but you actually can still play an awful lot of stuff on a 1060 6GB card at 1440p. 
Now, as I mentioned during the benchmarks, I would like to say and be absolutely clear, we're talking about AAA games, the big flashy titles, Far Cry 5, Ghost Recon Wildlands, that sort of thing. If your primary interest is in playing Overwatch or Rainbow Six Siege or even League of Legends and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, a 1070 Ti is extreme overkill. Even at 4K, you'll be able to play a lot of those games on a GTX 1060 6 gig card. 1440p will be absolutely fine. Even the 3 gig card for some of those will be fine. So I am referring to sort of the top of the end games, not so much the esports and casual titles. As I mentioned, World of Tanks, even the newly released 1.0 World of Tanks with the graphical engine update, 1440p, ultra detail, 60 plus frames per second on a GTX 1060. You want closer to 100 frames per second? That's what a 1070 Ti is for. Or turn it down to higher, medium, and then you'll get a lot more performance. These are the two deals on the market, in my opinion. I would pick between these two particular chips, not necessarily these cards or brands, just the 1066 gig versus the 1070 Ti. Links to those down in the description below. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section, links in the video description, and your feedback. Let me know, do you want to see 1070 Ti versus 1080 Ti? Do you want to see 1070 Ti versus 1070 and 1080? Do you want to see a Vega 56 card, which I've not covered for a while, versus the 1070 Ti? Let me know in the comments below what other video card comparisons you'd like to see. Furthermore, do you like the game selection that I've picked? I can't test 20 games on every card and do a reasonable number of these, so i got to keep it to maybe 5 or 7. If you want to see the game swapped out for something else, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.